All right, Dan is going to share with us his uh, casual mail story. So probably one of my greatest fat moments ever. There's this place, it's kind of like the slim fast for fat people of shopping. So it's, uh, it's called Casual Mail XL. Those of you who know what it is, awesome. Anyways, Did you know that uh, Louis Simmons actually sold uh, Mark's likeness to Lane Bryant once? Did he really? Yep. So I'm at Casual Mail XL and I walk in, I'm trying to get some dress shirts. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm looking for kind of like a slimmer fit type dress shirt, you know, like I, not something that's so large in this region, you know, I'm large in this region, but normally your shirts are fucking out here. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, we have a few shirts, uh, since you're like the athletic type, uh, <laughs> you know, you're nice and strong, you got broad shoulders and, you know, you're athletic, so yeah, we could find kind of a slim fit for you. And I was like... Is this the first time in my life that I'm gonna put on a slim fit shirt? <laughs> Dude, it was the best. Literally, I was I had a smile from here to here. For like the six whole hours. Oh my god. She called me athletic and in shape. There you go. And I wore a slim fit shirt. And that's the story of why Fat Dan doesn't belong in casual mail. He's too athletic. It's all hard work that you don't get to see. Working on them biceps. This is Mark Bell from Super Training Gym. Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. Here I am warming up for some, some squats, and here's my boy Silent Mike banging out them squats. Just trying to build a bigger butt, both of us at the same time in different ways. Yeah, backing that ass up. What are you doing on this day? Some repetitions? Yeah, a bunch of sets of eight uh, and a Why? couple of sets of Doesn't ten. Hurt? The goal is to get stronger. The goal is not to test, the goal is to get stronger. Banging out some reps for uh, what, a few weeks? You, for like, Jesus. You, you reps do, for uh, Jesus. Oh, okay. I've seen that meme yeah. before. I yeah. didn't know what it was all about. That's no. Mr. Bro Science himself. Ah. Are you doing reps uh, in hopes that you'll go to heaven? Reps for heaven. If reps you for do Jesus. a set of seven, that guaranteed that you're going to go to heaven. What if I did 11? You could do 11. You could do 11D70, like uh, SpongeBob. 11D70? Yeah, that's a number. I didn't know. On SpongeBob SquarePants. Mm. SpongeBob seems quite bright. He's very sharp. Oh, look at this. Sandy doing some front squats. The samurai. Mm -hmm. How many weeks do you do like the higher reps? Do you do that for four or five weeks? Do you do it for... I'll do it for as long as I can if I don't have a plan. Uh, so I may or may not do a meet in like June or July. So that's still like 17 or 16 weeks out. So I'll just plow kind of sets of six, eight, and ten. Um, just trying that to build. That belt is like actually hitting into your real wing. Oh, I'm so fat now. Everything cuts up my gut. And I get blood uh, marks everywhere. Yeah, the belt is pointing downward towards the floor. You know you're really fat when your like yeah. uh, dress belt points down towards the ground. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like, it's but true. I mean, but in that case, you're not even squatting. You're and just standing. The, yeah, and the belt's just so big. It's just so clunky. I'm so fat. What is Bobby doing? Trying to shoot a commercial? I think so. Um, you're starting to get some of that muffin top. Is that what you're kind of saying? Not me? too bad yet, but my waist is definitely bigger. I wouldn't is say there a fupa? No fupa and no like sag. Fat upper penis for those of you <laughs> watching. There's no sag yet, but there's definitely a, a wider circumference. What if you were to jump up and down for let's say like 10 seconds? How much Shirtless? more jiggle time? Yeah, how much more jiggle I'm doing time? it right now. There's not that much. Just like another five, six seconds. Yeah, there's not that much jiggle. <laughs> there's not much jiggle, but the, the circumference has grown. Uh, so the a jiggle, bit. jiggle, extra jiggle time might be a half second, if that. Yeah, 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 maximum. That's not too bad. You no. start to get to three or four Look seconds. Look at this pervert trying to film me from the back. What is he trying to do? Some POV? That's gross. That's weird. Thanks for the spot, Dan. That's great. I spot him. I program for him, and there he is, just fucking filming my asshole instead he's, of making sure I'm safe. He's pervin. He's perving hard. Just gross. Wow. Whoa, that shirt's really expanding. Yeah, talk about belt issues. Wow. And it jiggle. It just looks like uh, bread just rising, like some dough rising in his shirt. Sourdough, there. not just regular mm -hmm. dough. We've got Miss Joey banging out them squats. Yeah, it looks like she's been going heavier lately, trying to get more weight on her back. Creeping on at 200 pounds right here. Yeah, she's been working. Look at this, another perv. Oh, just shows yeah. up out of nowhere. Yeah, it yeah. looks like you need a spot. She would have asked, bro. And then she intentionally, she's smart. She intentionally almost missed it, so she got a little help, too. That's true. Everyone's gross here. Yeah, she's pervin. Big He's buff. Pervin. Going 700 plus right here. Yeah, he was going nuts on this day. He did a great job. Got some reverse band going. Uh, I, I don't remember the math, but I think it was like 750 plus. He, he, yeah, he, like, he screwed up. He wanted to take a little less, and he ended up doing a lot more than he bargained for. I remember this day, uh, Ryan Spencer's back was... Uh, just on fire. He's, he's like a torn labrum, too. I don't know what the hell he's doing. Yeah, and his, uh, <laughs> he's also lifting without a belt. I was like, dude, why don't you throw a belt on? Yeah. But, you know, that's the game. You know, you, you're like uh, Pete Ruber said on our podcast, uh, you're programming and all these different things. And 
you know, you're trying to do things right. You try to learn and you try to be more experienced and you try to be smart with it, but you're going to get hurt. Yeah, well, There's going to be bumps and bruises along the way, period. And sometimes that's the reason for a coach, you know, like you're not going to be the best judge of yourself. You're either going to push right. too hard if you're too competitive or, or go too soft if you're too much of a puss. Yeah. So you're better off sometimes having a coach and, uh, and give you a, a, a better eye. Yeah, and I would say at the same time, that you shouldn't be like injured, you know, you shouldn't be injured all that often. In, in my powerlifting career, I've only really been uh, actually injured like on the shelf for any period of time um, from that fall that I did with 1,085. Uh, other than that, everything's been pretty minor, minor yeah. bumps and bruises. I torn a pec. You're talking about being sidelined. Yeah, yeah, being sidelined for just a little bit, but nothing, nothing real major. But you shouldn't be like injured. Like if you're injured, then your fucking programming is probably off. Yeah, something. or technique or something. Yeah, or, or maybe you're trying new exercises and you're trying to go all out on going too heavy. There's Lauren banging out some uh, rack pulls against bands. Uh, these straps here, basically just an easier, softer way on the bar and on your body. Sometimes when you see. Uh, do old school rack pulls out of like metal pins, you get a shock through your bones, yeah, it hurt that, pretty bad. That works really good on those seat belt straps. Yeah. Buff going heavier or anything? Yeah, he's lo loading her up again. When you do programming for other people, um, like if you have someone uh, someone pre prepping for a meet if they're like 12 weeks out, they're, they're higher reps 12 weeks out, and then as they get closer, you start going down towards singles and stuff? Yeah, 12 weeks would probably be like fives and stuff. Trying to teach Smokey how to breathe. Like, as strong as he is, he has no idea what the fuck he's doing. His back's all rounded on his stiff legs. Right. He's super strong, and look at that. Even just pulling that up, I know he wanted to start from the top down on his stiff legs, but even when you're picking up 225 in any form, even 135, get yourself tight and flatten your back even on the way up. Yeah. Even if you're doing an RDL uh, from the top, which a lot of people do. The other thing, uh, Smokey's big issue was it wasn't breathing into his, like, his stomach. He's right. breathing into his lungs since so you just can't uh, really protect your spine even still he probably shouldn't even be on the deficit because he can't do it from the ground there's no reason for a deficit stiff leg if you can't uh, get a flat enough back off the ground um, but programming yeah for like 12 weeks out 16 weeks out uh, even 10 weeks out it's probably sets a five mm -hmm. said maybe sets a four kind of right. just depends on the style uh, of training you're going with but um, <laughs> why does she do every set eyebrow pumping every set she puts the bar down she racked the bar she fucking Winked at you, she gave you a thumbs up. I think she might have a thing for our camera guy. I know, you never know. You know, sometimes in here, um, it's great because you get you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of advices. Uh oh, what's going on there with Joey? Texting. Um, you get a lot of advices from a lot of different people, and sometimes that's awesome, and sometimes it's, it can be a little bit frustrating because you might get some different advice from some different people. But it is great to have some different eyes on you and get some uh, different coaching. Hitting some back squats? Yeah, we're doing some box squats. I don't know why on this day, but my knees were just crushed, so I decided to go, rather than a regular squat, decided to go with a back squat with my boy Jesse Burdick. Jesse's uh, really good at box squats, so I thought it'd be fun and challenging to, to try to bang out some box squats with him. I cheat and throw my, my old suit on for a couple sets. Um, just an old kind of single-ply suit, and um, I just I always had good workouts doing... Uh, Doing, the, doing a box squat and using some gear. And so it's just something I said, you know what, fuck it. I'm not gonna compete for probably a long time. And uh, might as well just do what gives me a good workout. Yeah, whatever feels good, whatever keeps you healthy, right? Yeah, why not, fuck it. And then the bar that we're using, this is a giant, cam giant cambered bar. You don't see these things too often, but it's a different, uh, different type of bar. Helps take the pressure off of your, um, oh, I'm there, I'm cheating. It hel helps taking, uh, Helps take the pressure off your shoulders, and it also changes the center of gravity. You kind of see, as we're coming up off the box, it's kind of pitching us forward a little bit. The bar is kind of swinging, kind of getting you off balance, getting you out of momentum a little bit. Um, if you guys were we're asking about the uh, ST Strong V-neck, uh, the benefits of the V-neck are that when you put on a belt, it becomes a deep V, mm. uh, and a deep V in training is always uh, a little bit better for the Instagram likes if that is one of your goals, which if it's not, you should reprioritize your life. And uh, if you're looking for a tight V, I don't think we can help you out with that. Oh, uh, you need a loose V because you beat it up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look at that. Look at how deep that's getting. Deep and beat up Vs. Look at the nipples are, are getting hard, too. And he must be really excited to squat with you. Mm-hmm. I guess you can't blame him. Two bros with pokey nipples. Yours nipples aren't so calm themselves. Yeah, I know. I don't know what happened on this day. <laughs> I think I was gone by this point. Pokey yeah, you nipples might coming. I, I had errands to run. Mm-hmm. Might have took off and got some food with Sandy. Yeah, we had to take a little nephew out to dinner. Oh, yeah? Or lunch. A little karate kid? The karate kid himself. Now he's playing basketball. Nice. The karate kid's playing basketball. 
Box squats, you always want to try to sit back. You're going to do them with a little bit wider stance. Um, again, the advantage is that you can um, really work your hips and you can get out of uh, killing your knees through there. They're a little bit um, hip dominant, hamstring dominant compared to a free squat. Uh, they're also breaking up the concentric and eccentric portions of the lift, um, which if done all the time may leave you weak in the hole, uh, but done some of the time may help your explosiveness on the way up. Yeah, and, and another advantage of a box squat, those of you that actually train people and work with uh, various people, um, anybody who has uh, really trouble getting down in their squat, has trouble with their mobility, you can just set the box up higher until they get used to it, and over a period of time, you can work their way down. You can also, if you have people that just really lift awkwardly, um, they're always forward on their knees, you can have them practice on a box for a few weeks until they start to have a little bit better form and you'll actually see it transition over really well into the free squat. Yeah, combination of the box squat and both the goblet squat or kind of front loaded squat yeah. with whatever are two great teaching tools. Strength is never weakness and that is it from Super Training Gym. Leave us a like or you're off the team. Leave a comment down below and if you want to watch other videos from the strongest gym in the West, click right here. If you want the best lifting gear in the game from howmuchyoubench.net, click over here. Right here.